Good afternoon, dear viewers. We have been absent for a very short time. In the previous video, we were speaking about angle graders, about the new drive, its replacement. But I think that we should start with the video, which appeared 9 or 10 months ago, which was made 9 or 10 months ago. Because now they ask us questions. You tell us things, but you don't show us many things. But we have already shown it. So why show it again? We showed how an angle grinder works. But back then it was how? It grinds well, it cuts quickly, it works without noise. And we were speaking about other tools in a similar way. The tools which we are re-equipping, where we are installing new drives. All of this was existing in the subjective reality, because we were to understand whether that technology was feasible. And we showed it. We made it come true, that's clear. But you know, other rules apply here, because all these self-made things, these artisanal, amateur things, they allow us to check some principles. If you look at how science evolves, how it develops, you're a scientist, but you know, you studied at school, are you a scientist? You were taught certain things. What is a scientist? There are many scientists and there are loads and loads of know-nothing people. We can say that it is somebody who does science. What is science? It is theories. Where do theories come from? From practice. If there is no practice, then it is fantasies. People start imagining tales, fairy tales. And then when practice does not match theory, practice gets eliminated. And then ambitions come into play. I prefer forgetting this term, scientist, you know? And I tend to relying on a more precise definition. People who do some activities. These people are called engineers. Design engineers, process engineers. They are people who create amenities, benefits, you know? They are people who fulfill our needs. And there are also designers, design engineers, who put it in a form, in a shape, because it must be pleasant for the eye. Well, I'm a kind of a boor, and I can't not say the wisdom. Not everything which is pleasant for the eye is pleasant to touch, and what is pleasant to touch is not always pleasant for the eye. Imagine feces. They are warm, they are soft, but, well, they smell horrible, they stink. Sometimes you look at some products. Yes, it is pleasant for the eye, but they are not very useful. I have often come across such products. They are well designed. They look good. And then you start using them and they don't function that well, not as the designer or the engineer designed them to be. These products, honestly, they just surprise me. They amaze me with their functionality. We have deviated from the topic a little bit. So, nine, ten months ago, we showed a device which looks like an angle grinder because it performs its functions. But it has a different design, you know, cable sticking out. Still, it functions and it functions very well. After that, after technical testing, we were to define what shall we do further. What are the tasks set? The task that we had before and that we have now, that we are solving, is creation of a drive for electric tools and for home appliances. To replace this drive, collector of the drive, a mechanism, based on this drive, based on such motors, all modern electric tools are created, with some exceptions home appliances. And when we use it, when somebody uses it, usually neighbors go crazy and start hitting the radiator. 
like stop it, stop making noise. They introduce silence regimes and so on. And then, for example, somebody starts to grind meat, to make minced meat, or to squeeze some juice. Everyone goes crazy, cats climb on walls, hide under sofas, with all the consequences which follow. Men leave the house and go drink some beer in a quiet place. So unpleasant things happen. This is the first thing. Second thing. This collector. There is an open contact and then there are little brushes moving. And it is quite an unpleasant thing. Quite an unpleasant thing. It gets stuck with black lead. Some rubbish can get stuck here. Some dust. And so it breaks very quickly. Plus, when it stays at home, it can get oxidated in bad conditions. There are sparks, it burns out. Quite an unreliable thing and expensive at the same time. Why? Because making this router is not cheaper than making this stator. Okay, it gets in. Stator of an induction motor. But an induction motor, you know, it has this rotor, this type of rotor. It is definitely cheaper than this one. Visually you see that there is no copper, there is no collector. Here we have the plate, the same shaft. There is no necessity to isolate it, because here there is an electrolytical contact and connection to the network. A whole range of components is absent, so this one is cheaper, this one is more expensive. And so the task was set to stop using this motor and to transfer to the induction motor. At the same time, the same task was solved by a different means, using high coercitivity magnets, using the so-called BLDC motors. Things seem to be fine, great, great motor, but it has important disadvantages. The price is quite high plus the possibility of producing it as a finished product only in China. If China sells it to the outer world, the magnets, I mean, they do it at a high price. They prefer selling magnets as part of products. And there is another disadvantage here. When a BLDC motor is incorporated in leather and we put it on the surface we were working on, if there are abrasive shavings there, then they adhere to it. and the raw ventilation flows and it gets sucked inside and again it adheres and the motor stops. So there are all these disadvantages, but an induction motor does not have them. Besides, in the West they started to introduce laws that prohibited selling and putting into circulation products, electric tools, with a collector, with brushes. Well, then they cancelled it. Europe thinks for a long time and then they start rectifying their errors. They introduced it, then they thought about it and they cancelled it. But the mechanism had already been launched. That is why we set the task to develop a drive to replace this one. We have done it and it is to become part of history. We have made this device, we have tested it, we have looked at it. This task is solvable. However, there was a, however, there was a but. Why did we have that delay? Here you see a rotor. This little rotor. Of the first machine we were testing. How was it made? For example, this is a workpiece. One, another. You see how it was made. The rods are circular, short circuit rings are big, all of that is done. It is made of copper. And there is brazing with brazing material. Because when you work with aluminium it is much harder. And when we obtained the results, we were satisfied with those results. Here you see after processing, if we put it here, we see the rings that have been ground 
Everything has been processed. It is all satisfactory. The tests have been carried out. We confirmed that, yes, creating such a machine, such a drive to replace the collector one is possible. Next, we had the task. Another task. Okay, this is a technical project made according to accessible technologies. But you can't really produce a series of that unless you are a suicider or have poor judgment or just want to do it at an expensive price. A lot was done like that before, but times were different. Now it has changed. So we were to make technological equipment, test the equipment, test the technology. In order to obtain this instead of that, this one. It is also a semi-finished product before processing. It is the same router with a squirrel cage structure made of aluminium. In order to obtain this thing, we were to make technological equipment, technological fittings, to test it, to test the technological modes. You see there are some roommates here. So it was quite a long way without special equipment. You can't make it quick and dirty, you know, like we were making, brazing this one. Now we made it, we succeeded. And then the result, here it is, here is the result. It is well visible. We obtained this rotor. This rotor. The existence theorem and feasibility of it in our conditions, all of that was proved. What next? And then the next rule applies. Amateur people would have said, okay, I have made it, it works great, it works fine, cool, I can switch it on, I cut it, it is better, so on. But it is all subjective. Now, time came where we were to determine what results should we obtain. That is why, well, it happened before, it was a parallel process. We examined state standards for electric tools, various technical specifications, which they were to provide. We bought some models, some prototypes. They are in the shop floor now. We put the models on the testing bench. Can we have a look? I will show it to you, colleagues. To make it more convenient. Let's get here. I will show it to you. To make it clear that it is really so. You see fittings made on purpose for installing angle grinders and for coupling them with the loading machine. And we started to identify characteristics from standard series products. The basis was angle grinders with a capacity of 2600 volt, 2300 volt as well, and 2100 volt. And you can read it here. I can show it to you. And here our metrologists, testers, working in the laboratory. They gave us very interesting information, like in an old Russian film, you know, the Tsar is not the real one. Here capacity is stated, 2100 watt, very interesting, 220 volt, 50 hertz. The interesting thing is that the consumed capacity, there is mechanical one and there is electrical one. If we look at the technical passport and we multiply volts by amperes, we will get 2100, but not volt, not watt, but volt amperes. So this capacity, 2100, 
it is consumption from the network 2100, 2300, 2600 from the network and it is calculated in volt amperes. This device has its cosine as phi, it is complex current, active, reactive, all of it together. But they write it in what? Maybe we are fools, maybe it is one of the two. But we turned out to be right. And then it started. When we were identifying characteristics, some characteristics were confirmed and others were not. They left doubts. Still, our drive, this one, induction drive, was to consume not more than what was specified there, not more than that. And as we made the controller to prove existence, we developed the controller further for it to provide a very high cosine as phi and a low level of reactive currents and using the capacity corrector, capacity coefficient corrector or peak factor. We developed it to 0.998 or 0.995, quite a high indicator. And we measured all the characteristics, the torque that it develops, at how many revolutions, and these characteristics became baseline for us. And the drive which we were incorporating was to provide those characteristics. And then we see not to invest too much. Can you see it? At the beginning we were not touching the casing. We made a long shaft, we put it, it is long, can you see it? We tested it. Then we made such insertions to shorten the shaft to this size. Can you see it? It is a little bit shorter. Lengths are different. And we started testing. Let's look at it from behind and from here as well. I will show it to you. It is inbuilt. The motor is inbuilt. And we started testing it. We tested it. We got characteristics. And those characteristics were superior to those of collector motors. That was clear, so we decided to move further. We decided to move further. Because all of those things adjusted that allowed us to measure characteristics with big loads. They were running for 30 minutes, consumed nominal mechanical capacity on the shaft. And how did we actually do it? Capacity on the shaft, on the stone, on the working tool. It is the same as a standard collector motor provides. And a collector motor, it has a significant decrease of revolutions. We lose almost 2000. As for us, the loss in revolutions when we get from blank run to nominal capacity, it is not more than 40 revolutions. So induction motors have shown better characteristics. We got through that stage. The next thing to do was the following. Testing of the natural model. We had already made this device. This device, you see it here. There is no barrel there. There used to be a barrel like that. It had been tested extensively. And now we made this casing where the motor was placed with channels, with ventilators. You see it here. The motor has sensors of temperature. All of that is controlled. And a handle was made for that. This handle, where a controller is incorporated. There is no controller here. The guys will maybe bring it to show it to you. It was fully assembled, so the fully assembled prototype was ready with thermal modes. 
the very prototype of an angle grinder. And that machine was tested in this state. The controller was linked to the testing bench, to the equipment, through a special pair for us to be able to change its characteristics, settings, which were necessary. And this angle grinder, you see that there is a special bushing there for coupling. It is now being tested. It is being tested for long-term capacity, for load and for emergencies. So starting from now, we can say that a prototype of an angled grinder appeared. Everything which was before that. There were stages that development goes through from an idea, from a concept, from a model which was made in quite an artisanal way to using technologies, serious production technologies, manufacturing nodes, parts. The controller went through very significant changes as well in the process of all those tests. Some component solutions were changed as well. The circuit plate was remade several times. Radiators for cooling were optimized. Sufficiency or redundancy of the radiator was determined practically. A lot of work was performed. A lot of work. And at the same time we were testing standard machines in order to confirm characteristics that we are to provide. We were not just to test one machine, but several of them. We will have several machines, we will have them tested to confirm the parameters, because there is quite a lot of variation of characteristics there from one motor to another. Now status like this, we have dozens of them ready, dozens of them prepared, rotors as well, and in the previous videos we showed that rotors have different shafts for different electric machines, for different devices, for different tools. So the task is to create an all-purpose drive that can equip a big range of tools and home appliances. And as of today we can say that the drive has happened. It has been realized. What is now going on in terms of the angle grinder? You know, it is just a question of technique. When testing of thermal modes is finished, then all these 3D models can be passed on for manufacturing press molds. This is clear. And then we can get to the commercial part of the project. Because at the current stage, apart from testing, We also calculate costs with different batches of production, for example, producing the drive separately or producing electric tools. We are also optimizing the price of the elements, the base of elements of different components. And I don't exclude that the controller will go through changes in terms of reducing costs. This is possible without deteriorating its quality. We are now working actively with partners, with Victor Arista, for example. We are working with him on components. A lot of work is being performed. A lot of work. And I hope that very soon, not later than June, we will show you this work in real conditions of the devices, even though it is not that important, really. The main thing is that we obtain certain characteristics at testing benches, because as for overload, as for overheating, you can't achieve such rough conditions in real life, in real conditions. If we have a look at state standards, we will see 
that an angle grinder is supposed to operate in the conditions of overload for 30 minutes, when climate conditions are normal, and nodes and parts are not to be overheated and reach temperatures which are higher than acceptable. Thermal resistance classes a whole range of parameters, both for the controller and for the motor itself. But you understand very well that any abrasive stone will be really completely worn out within 30 minutes. And the fact that you don't lose revolutions, due to that you have better performance, better capacity, and of course that means better work. Now we can only assess it by our own subjective feeling, by our associations, the level of noise I mean. But noise mostly comes from the reducer and from the tool, the motor itself. The collector does not make that horrible noise. And quality of reducer, well, that does not depend on us. It depends on the supplier. I think that brands that produce components for angle grinders, they will now have to ask themselves a question. What quality should they have? Quality of gears when you have such a drive, not to make noise, because before gears were not audible, because the motor was very noisy, but now you can. You can hear the noise of the gears. What else would I like to add? Very soon we will show you other solutions. There will be separate videos without any comments, work which happens at the testing bench or maybe they will be accompanied with comments for you to look at technical characteristics. Follow the website sovelmash.ru. There is the section tests there, protocols are put there for standard ones and soon protocols for this one will appear for several mesh machines because we will need to do it for 2100, 2300, 2600. There will be three modifications of angle grinders. And capacity. You know, the question is what capacity to stay there? 2600 because it will consume less even though mechanical capacity on the shaft, on the tool, will be higher. What to do? How to market? Not to confuse people. What we need is present this machine under a different brand, under a different name, because a person opens it, they read instructions and they want to know the difference. And in the first lines it will be important to explain that in its mechanical characteristics in its mechanical capacity, it is like this machine, it consumes that amount of energy, don't confuse them. Follow the videos, there will be quite many of them, videos about equipment. More tools, more equipment is being prepared. I think that we will provide you with a lot of positive news. Of course, we would like to be happy with other things that all these products start to be produced in the framework of serious production. But if we want to do it ourselves, then we need to finish construction, what was started in Alabushova on site number 16. Or the second option is to enter an affiliated relationship with other interested parties, legally. And maybe even not Russian ones. See you soon. Stay safe. We will continue soon. Goodbye.